Okay, I got it. All right, this is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show is latenightparents.com, where you find the latest and greatest there. We are doing another session with my boy, True Armor. True, how you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. As always, um, best ways to, to find your work, True? Uh, catch me on YouTube at Truest Armor. And catch me on Twitter at True Armor. And okay. uh, generally all other media as True Armor. That's me. Well, that's good. Um, so tonight's episode, got about four or five topics to talk about. Um, but I will start off with something good. Good. Walmart. Good always welcome. Let's get Walmart it. shutting down um, their stores. Their ten thousand stores across America um, for Thanksgiving. Remember, at one point, it was like an assault on the on the holiday where Black Friday bled into Thanksgiving. Yeah. You know. Um, then the whole week became Black Friday, and then it was purge season. Yeah, yeah. O- but it was it was kind of sad. It was it was well, sad. It was it was really sad because you would sit there as a family to have Thanksgiving, and half your family, if they were working at a right. you know at the local mall or something like that, your niece or your nephew, they're working at the mall. Boom! They whisk right out the door. Right, and, and I can't tell you how. How many times did we see videos where people were being trampled for yeah. the big screen? Yeah. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's the very same thing of me being a wealthy guy and walking into your poverty-stricken district or church, right? A, a sacred place like a church. And, and knowing that everybody is barely making it and trying to keep the lights on and, and having faith. And me just walking in and, like, going... You know, doing some flippantly arrogant thing like throwing money on the ground, like enough money where people scramble, not like two hundred dollars. Nobody's gonna lose their church and you know. But if I would like, you know, drop fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars in like fifty-dollar bills, hundred-dollar bills on a church floor, you would get the same kind of. You ever watch um, the, the the like? I don't, I don't want to call them Monaco. They've been around for 50 years. But I uh, like the price is right in the 50 in the 50s. In like the six sorry. The price is right in the 70s when it was like new and hitting its stride. Where okay. people won stuff seemed very different from people now who get super psyched about money they haven't won yet, right? Like okay. Ellen DeGeneres had people jumping through hoops for money, right? And and it just to me, tells you, you know, money is always appreciated. Don't get me wrong, but you get to a place where it's like dance a jig for me for this nickel, and that's that's what it seems to be. And the, it's not a nickel anymore. It's like ten grand. And to your listeners, ten grand is not a lot of money. It is not going to. I mean, it's nice well, to have in well, your pocket. Don't get me wrong. Especially after nice. taxes, it's not a lot Thank of money. You. It's it, it, don't get me wrong. It's nice to have you know ten grand on you. But it's not going to help you buy a house. It's not going to help you pay off college debt or get your kids into college. It's not going to shift your life in any real way at all. Um, and it's it's people who are worth a god ton of money, sort of like playing this game of to to. Uh, one day I wish everybody would just stop doing it, and then the people in charge who control you wouldn't know what to do with you. Because they control us through money and fear, right? It's one of the it's one of the two. So, I, I think it's a good thing. Going back to the original topic here, I think it's a good thing that they stopped Black Friday because the idea right well, next to Thanksgiving well, and Christmas, well, where you're supposed to be thankful for for things that aren't money based, but then but, but I want to I want to say I want to yeah. say Black Friday's not being stopped. Just opening on Thanksgiving. No, is it's, going, it's, going, it's going online, and that's good because you've seen right. people rip down those those metal gates and like pull them up. Yeah, come on. Other people get trampled because once you hit the floor, you don't have you have all these people who I don't see you down there, and then trip over you, and the other people trip over them. I mean, a stampede is a ridiculous thing. Do you remember 
the stampede at City College that made Puffy and yes and uh, yes. Heavy D famous. Remember that? Yes. Where people yes, jam- I do. The picture of people jammed indoors because mm-hmm. everybody tried to get out this twenty foot wide entrance at the same time, and there was a thousand of them, and managed to get stuck. I could not believe people could actually get stuck in a doorway. And there's pictures of them stuck in a doorway at this overcrowded party at City College. And, you know, it did make them rich and famous. So I don't know what to say about it. But it was well, a disaster. And it was all about, you know, getting people hyped and agitated over, over something that wasn't really that important, that was not worth losing your life over. And I think this is, this is what Black Friday has become. You sweat for like the whole year for pennies and maybe this one day a year you can get a little more for your money you know and then you you're up against it with other people who are in the same boat trying to get a little more for their money three was it three o'clock in the morning after on on, on thanksgiving not three o'clock it's like midnight or one night on thanksgiving after you have had dinner why are you yeah. leaving the uh yeah i don't know yeah so it's, <laughs> i think it's a good thing just buy it online and and I, I think with the advent of e-commerce and the fact that thing, let me wrap this up. Okay. They, they didn't stop it because they they appreciated the American family and thought this was bad. They likely stopped it because of coronavirus. You know, they wanted to, you know, they didn't want to say in November, eh, we're not gonna be doing XYZ. They were like, you know what, it's, it's been getting us drama anyway. Maybe if we just slipped out now, you know, like how they like to drop stories on Friday night. Uh, uh-huh. Political, so yeah. So I think it was more of that. I don't think it was so much that those maybe boards... maybe coronavirus, but I, I I think the e-commerce sales are through the roof. Yeah, yeah. I no one's going to these places anymore. I mean, the one thing we've learned it's... with coronavirus was you don't need that brick and mortar mall. Yes, anymore. I mean, unfortunately, I because that means right. that means a lot of jobs are going out the out the door, but. Hey, you're, you know what? You can get that item purchased online, curbside pickup, or delivered to your house as quick as can be. Yeah. So, yeah, you can, I mean, you can do all your shopping in your, you know, favorite jammies and your fuzzy slippers and not sweat it, you know? And, and why not? Versus, you know, in this environment, people show up without a mask. And do you want to be at, uh, Black Friday, half the people have masks, the other half don't. And there's a good <laughs> can fighting over the last big screen TV over nonsense, yelling. Uh, now, if you're yelling, your six feet has to be twelve feet. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but you, yeah, you, you know the funny thing about it is, with all those Black Friday events, regardless, we're not just beating up on Walmart. But no, you, no, no, you no, no, need no, no, insert right your favorite store. You exactly. Insert your favorite favorite store. They only have six TVs. They only have uh, yeah. uh, five air fryers going for twenty nine ninety nine. You know, there's, exactly. there's limited portions. Yeah. I mean, limited you know, quantities. Into the scrum with everybody to get that last air fryer. You're gonna show up there after Thanksgiving dinner with your family, and nobody's gonna. You know, I mean, you're gonna everything you're looking for will be gone because other people got it already. Because, like you said, there's only eight to ten or twelve of them. Six of them, if you know. So why just why go out? You just wander around shopping. So question for you: <laughs> Have you ever yeah. attended a Black Friday event? Have you I ever did. stand I out did. online? I have never stood out online. Oh yeah, I did once. Me, you know my sister Viral. So mm-hmm. uh, I came down. This is before I lived here in VA. Um, and I what did I hear? You know what? It might have been at my mom's house in Delaware. So we all gathered at the, for the grand family gathering. And there was, um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I think what it was, yeah, it was Prince, I forget the name. They have a Prince Anne's or Prince George's or something. Um, there's a John Mall, Queen of Pressure Mall. Exactly. So okay. we, we all go to Queen of Pressure Mall. It's like one in the morning. And I'm okay. like, why, you know me. I'm like, why am I even? And I'm just already kind of like a three-year-old toddler in this in this environment. And we all stood online and my, you know, but that that was it wasn't it it wasn't as crazy as it as you see on TV. But there was a ton of people. It was like one in the morning. I was like, why are we doing this? And then I was out with my sister and my nieces. 
you know, just trying to be part of a family thing to do something because I was stir crazy. And then I tortured myself of I had because, you know, they're not going to go and get what they want and leave. We were mm-hmm. like an hour and a half. But what was the item that you picked up? What was I that item that, that you could? My sisters, they got all oh, okay. and stuff, and <laughs> stuff for the kids. They got husbands and da 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 da. Um, some of the guys went, uh, so I went because some of the guys went. If it was all women, I wouldn't have gone. Um, but you know, it was it was what it was. It was just people shopped. I I didn't get anything, but like I said, I think my sister got stuff for her husband and the kids and, and her grandbabies who were about to go back to school. I had 20 year old nieces who got cool stuff for themselves and had pot earphones. I mean, I think I don't want to be sexist, but I think women like to to sift, right? They like to, oh, look at this. Oh, I don't maybe I want, oh, look at this. But men don't like uh-huh. to sift. Men just kind of like to go, uh, that. That's what I want, and I'm out. And that's it, right? Uh-huh. So, but it was one in the morning, and after I was like, oh, we'll probably be out for 20 minutes, an hour. I'm good with that. And it was, yeah, yeah, it was it was way longer <laughs> than I thought. But it was it wasn't. My whole thing was, it wasn't a zoo. My whole thing was, I can't believe it's all these people are out here standing online mm. waiting for to shop. I mean, consumerism, greed, stay home with your family, you know what I mean, yada, yada, yada. But then you watch it and it's like, Ugh. but And by the time it got really bad, like my family had opted out. They, they were online and we'd watch it on TV and go, what is wrong with those people? And then I'd be like, you went to those things last year. And then it would become that kind of, you know, gotcha. family kind of ha ha ha. But we were not there. We were not out in in this place shooting people over TVs who don't wear masks and all this other kind of <laughs> craziness. So yeah, I don't know. It's one of the things just, I think may very well die out in the American culture, and it should. <laughs> this is Ted Hicks from Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show is latenightparents.com. We're talking with True Armor. Um, next question or comment I will state is today we watched our president, even though we might not want to claim the him, right we watched, honorable Donald John Trump. We we watched our president have Donald a change, John. have a change in tone, and we watched all the journalists and broadcasters fall in line to say, Oh, he was so serious, and it was only a 30 minute press conference. And blah blah blah, and he talked about mask and everything else like that. Why are we giving him a high five for something he should have done months oh, ago? Work. Yeah, yeah. Is I, I mean, is it is is the bar that low? Yeah, I think it is. I I, I think you answered your own question. I think the bar is that low. And excuse me. On top of that, I think the American citizenry. It's really used to just this kind of like wishy-washy, namby-pamby, flippy-floppy kind of American political posture, right? So it's like, let's not even talk about Trump because everybody hates Trump. Let's talk about Barack Obama. Barack mm-hmm. Obama was like, gay marriage? Nope, that's wrong. Turned on a dime, right? Oh, I, I, I evolved. Really? That fast? You know what? I was talking to somebody. I am essentially the same person I was since I've been about eight. I really am, right? Okay. I don't want you to treat people poorly. I don't want to treat people poorly. You know, I've got all these things. That, but for me to shift so dramatically from, like, I, I, I wouldn't know what gay marriage was at eight. But I'm a fair, I was a fair-minded kid then. I might have thought it was weird and icky, but I was like, you shouldn't mess with those people, right? So it's the same thing. As you age up, him saying this to me was one of the more the more blatant political maneuvers, right? He should have been that enlightened before he had to be called on it. And I think this, you know, this is the same thing with Trump, right? He's if, if he was open and really open, it wouldn't have taken him this disaster to get there. And the disaster it by which I'm talking about is his poll numbers are a skydiver without a parachute. I mean, right. it's just a plummeting right. e- experience. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing that's going to stop his numbers from cratering is if he gets his parachute to work, which is his his team to sell his, his message to the people so he can get another four years or the ground, 
<laughs> right? It's one of those two things. I mean, I don't know. It's the American politics is is a a royal bad show. Like it's just not good. I mean, look at Portland. I mean, it's just all over the place. I mean, the police brutality, and then you protest against the police brutality, and then the cops are more brutal. You're like, what? And so yeah, I don't know. It's it's just it's the whole environment is is a uh it's it has always been a pot on a stove and i think the people in congress the the congress the president uh president not in congress but the congress the senators and, and the congressmen with the president and the senate and the senate and the the supreme court has been able to sort of like keep the whole place from bubbling over and every time when it did bubble over, they put it down with dark hostility but now you're in the what i'm calling the modern age because everybody's got a camera and it's truly modern everybody can see what you're doing you can't really so much lie about what means what and who did what um like george floyd i mean you can't say that nobody saw what they saw because everybody's got a camera uh and now i think you're going to really have to address some of this you know, I was well, I, I think with today, he started to address it, but it, yeah, he was addressing it because, like it, was on, it, because it, it was on the script. It was a part of his script. Right. right. So exactly. unfortunately that... So Barack Obama can come to a gay marriage late and say, I evolved. He's trying to come to, you know, uh, uh, what, what he came to wear a mask late last week. Uh, yeah, I think he only did two. The only two photos of him wearing a mask, right? Uh, right. And he himself tweeted one. One was taken by the the press, the AP, and one was he himself tweeted it for. I think, in my opinion, for good energy in in the atmosphere because the people who his base was like, we're not wearing masks, and all of a sudden they're like, huh, maybe we should wear masks. Uh, well, so I, yeah, I still don't. I still don't think it's sold. I I, I, no, still... I don't think so either. <laughs> I think but, it's kind of like it's late shifted to the party. That he, can, he can say, oh, we should wear a mask. I think it's shifted enough. Yeah, that he's he late to the that. party where at, the, at yeah. the end of the day, it's 140,000 lives. Republicans are always late to the party. Republicans right. are always I agree. late to the party. I agree. But there's 140,000 lives out there. That yeah. number is just increasing, increasing, increasing. And we're we're at the point where now you're saying this? I'm like, come on. Yeah. I mean, most people... Not, they don't know what the... Yeah, they, his team is... I don't know, man. Most people should his, be able to see through this. And hopefully the voters... Yeah, but his team aren't most people. His teams are rich, connected, excuse my language, but like idiot heads, right? They only talk to each other about whatever they think the issue is. So now they're trying to talk to me and you, and we're not them. And they're also right. trying to talk to the Latino family who are not them, and the Asian family who are not them, as well as the immigrant families who are not them. They're trying to run America through edict and, do I want to say aggression? Well, well, however they're trying to run it, it has nothing to do with uh, what the people want, which is in the core fabric of the place. So if the people want term limits and universal health care, then you should be working on trying to figure that problem out versus telling the people you don't get that you're all lazy or you know i don't know i mean it's it's always some kind of why man yeah they, they don't know what they're doing and they i don't think i think they've lost i don't want to say the 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 mandate to lead that's a little you know but i will say that they they are so disconnected from their, their leadership their stewardship of this place is tenuous. Their leadership is bad. And their connection to the to the common man and woman, everyday worker, whether you're a union guy or you're, you're just, you know, is, is, at, is, I don't even know, I'm looking for a word for it. It's, I, I don't see how they represent them as a collective, rather, represent mm -hmm. what the people as a collective want. It seems like 
they rule by division. So you have you have two giant groups, and in those those two groups, you have all these small segments. And now both of those two giant groups are kind of bisected by racial animus that you know people seen, and some people want changed and most people want change, but when you follow like the poll numbers, the Washington Post did this uh I'm trying to remember the this the it had so many stats in it. I was like, are these stats for real? Oh, I wish I had it for your listeners. But yeah, it was it's it was in like the last 36 hours. I, I but Man, um, people are just unhappy, and everybody seems to be unhappy. And I just yeah, like, it's across the board. It's yeah, across the it's board. It's not just for one topic. Like it's not just Black Lives Matter, which you're trying to blame to then gain more traction to stay in Congress, right? Um, it's everybody's unhappy. Like people need to feed their children, keep a roof over their heads, and people in Congress seem to make that really hard to do. Well, and, they're just not doing their jobs. Well, what is their jobs? I think I think they think their job is to stay in Congress, like L.A. Engel, <laughs> who just lost his bid to to rec- not reclaim the seat, but to to uh, to run again. Run to, right? Yeah, exactly. To, so now to, he's out. To, to, was, totally run again. His career is over. And his it's actually so quite frankly, ten or twelve terms. Nothing. I mean, come on. Yeah, you we 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 spent some time. Um, on a previous podcast where we were talking about primarying these types of career politicians and getting yeah. them out because they're yeah. no longer effective. Yeah. We talked exactly. about this yeah. maybe a month ago. Yeah. And we, we, I mean, to, we kind of give it an exa- a, 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 a uh, not example, um, but a metaphor. Think of these politicians as your hunters and your protectors. If we were like, a small tribe of like a hundred people, right? You don't need AO hunters out in the field chasing the bisons and the mammoths, right? You need sharp-minded young thinkers. And they have rigged this place so that they are the only hunters. So you have to think that your society is starving because it is. And what what in this metaphor, what we're starving for would be the food there would be things like education reform and police reform and health care they're not doing anything we want but they remain you know in charge and people are just tired and for all the boldness we as americans talk we're not ones to kind of like overthrow the system and like rage against the machine we really aren't we really aren't unless you put us to it so black people are always the ones who will rage against it but if you're comfortable you kind of go america's a, a good and comfortable place right i mean i'm not you know, I'll talk to this lawyer about that, and I'll get redressed, and blah, blah, blah. but you know, in these times when people are ripping down statues and kind of losing their minds, and you have to seriously tell people why they should hold their powder when you have not given them anything, and on top of that, you you treat you know the the cops treat women badly. I've always said it's not just the the black people that they're killing. I've seen cops treat women badly, like they hate their mothers. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You know, and like, like today, uh, who's the representative from? Um, what did, it was just say, who's the representative from Florida? Y- yo, no, yo ho, who who stepped to Representative Ocasio Torres in this aggressive, and hateful manner? I was like, this is where you look. You, you, why, why should I trust this? I was a bar guy for a long time. And I've seen guys who get drunk, who nice is nice guys, sober, you know. But once they get drunk, all that animus comes out. And that girl that they talked to and worked on night and bought her, you know, she's like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. All of a sudden, they hate her. Not only do they hate her, they hate all these other women in this bar. Not only do they hate those women in the bar, they hate the bartender, Kate. Because I'm like, you know what? Fix your head, man. It, it, it's every now and then it comes out and that whole thing was tells me more about him than about her and if that dude is a big dude she's not a big woman that is no. always a bad look and the fact that all these these modern power broker women 
didn't lose their mind about it. That was the mo- one of the most aggressive things I've seen. And this is politics in a long time. And no one, it's not on television. People act like it didn't happen. I find that that problematic for the country. I really do. I do. Yeah. Hey, we want to switch topics right here. Yep, yep. Um, we're going to get back to what happened to AOC. But I, I got to ask you. Yeah. What the you know what? What in the blue blazes is happening in Portland? <sighs> There's some type of minority report, dystopia. They yeah. are about to commit a crime, so we're going to come in yeah, and stop people it for crime. They think they're going to pull, which I was like, "What?" Did you ever watch that show, Person of Persons of Interest? I I never I know of it, but I've never seen an episode. Ah, well, they stopped crimes before they actually happened. So, <laughs> yeah, that was the greatest thing about the, the show is five seasons long. The last season yeah, no, wasn't also, too got, great. I was about to say Henry Cavill. It's got the the who's the guy who's Jesus? Um, right. Jim Caviezel. Right, Caviezel. So uh, Jim Caviezel. Right. Yes, and they stopped crimes before they were about to happen. So that's what I I guess. You know, uh, the president has some type of AI working in the background. And he's sending these federal agents out. I mean, right. with their costume on, bad guys. Only the bad with, guys. With with their costumes with on, fully covered, no identification yeah. outside yeah. of police, and yeah. they are. I mean, Man, I don't want to tell you. Look, listen. So, where do you, thing, I, I I will say this much. Where is? The media on stuff like this the because the protest can't trust the media. You the protest, all of this. The protest <laughs> never actually stopped, but they no. stopped showing the protest. Yeah, like I told you like, on the live podcast, like the forest fire, they didn't tell you that they stopped. They just stopped reporting on them. They just right. moved on. They don't actually tell you news. They 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 hit you with as much sensational nonsense as they can until their masses go. Oop, this is bad for us. Just change the topic or drop the topic. So fires mm. are fine. A, a bigger story took over from fires, but you think that you'd have a big story, and and the fires become a B story. They can still tell you how it's going because people are still losing their livelihoods, and cops are cops. Firemen are still risking their lives in these fires in our nation in California, which is where they were raging, right? California, Oregon. Versus mm-hmm. what they were telling us all about Australia, who, who I have some people, some family members who live in Australia, they were saying how, wow, like the Australian thing is ridiculous. And especially near New South Wales, which is, I, I would say New South Wales is there, would it be there in New York or would it be there Los Angeles versus Perth? Anyway, New South Wales is one of their giant major cities. And, you know, the fire was close, right? Um, but they, they, they just stopped. Like, you, you would think fires didn't matter anymore, right? And this is this is, this is is the game they're playing. They're not actually telling you the full disposition of a story that they've been telling you for however long that story's been running, unless it's a crime story. Crime stories are really easy. This is Sean. This is Sean's wife, Lula Bell, right? Lula Bell goes missing. This is our uh, orange spray. Ooh, Lula Bell goes missing. They will either put me in jail and look for her or find her and put me in jail. It has a nice wrap. It's a beginning, it's a middle, and it's an end. All this other stuff takes long, and they don't really want to mess with it. They didn't go anywhere near some of these other stories like Epstein and blah, blah, blah. But, you know. Portland is at day 54. Yeah, yeah. And just now, with this latest in the last week, where people were being secret police, the border. First of all, why is the border patrol? Some of these guys have border patrol patches. Why is the border patrol in Oregon arresting people? <laughs> you know, this is. I mean, what I said, like, I think I, I should start right now. The days and the tops of the shows that we have together. But I'm like, congratulations, but, America. You're all inwards now. This is it. Don't think that you won't be pulled into this pit. 
it's 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 there's the racial animus to this nation, but it's it's mostly about oligarchs and elitism, right? The idea that you can attack a woman under a dumpster and not go to jail because you're connected to people, you know, is part of that, right? The idea that, you know, the prince of England uh daughter got married and he's not picture to any of the things because he's got baby issue allegations. Yeah. Is is how these people are protected. You let somebody uh, whisper something like that about you or me. There'd be a thousand people outside your my house. That, you yes. know, we would be yes. in jail. They have all our computers. All on on the the aspersion of you you did something. Not and and, there, and you'll have a thousand people go, what? Don't even know him or her. And we've all he's always at church with us and they and they don't care because the thing is to show you the the outrageous the, if it bleeds, it leads kind of kind of deal. So, you know, here in Oregon, no, I'm about to say here in Oregon. I mean there in Oregon, you've got unmarked cops unmarked, but you've got un uh unmarked or cars. You have uh I'm I'm sure for a word. Anyway, you have uh, officers, federal federal agents with no markings of any kind of agency Mm -mm. or unit on them wearing the thickest of protective gear guarded out as if they're they're in the hills of Afghanistan. To me, you're asking for war with the American people. And that is the wrong thing you should ask for, considering the place was founded on rebellion, right? Uh, We're at the point... Yeah, we're I at think, the point. Oh, go ahead. I think, yeah, I think one of the greatest things I've ever seen was done by the Russians, right? So when they took over the, um, I forgot how old that was, but when they took over Russia, there was a coup, uh, and they ousted Gorbachev. Um, they the people who caught the coup had tanks and the military on the street, and the military was like, "We're not doing this. We're not. No, we're not." And I was like, "I." And I, from that day, I was, I wondered. Would the American military shoot fire on the American citizenry? And then I'm like, well, you know, Kent State, they did that before, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. they and since Kent State, they I forgot the other place that they they've done it. And I was like, if all these Black Lives Matter people and and they and Trump uh had the National Guard and the military and all these border patrol and all these unmarked federal people in fatigues show up and start like and put them on the street would they stand with the people and be like yeah the people dictate what the country is and they, they've had it or would they go we're just going to murder you all off and treat you all like we've always treated citizens black citizens in particular but we've always treated the citizens of this country i wonder about it and and this is why i think it's more likely to get worse before it gets better and and all like as an ex cop, I tell like I used to tell all the cops that I work with, "What are you an idiot? You don't all live on military bases. You know, you just you live out here in the public with the people. You know, you don't. I mean, you can't get darker and darker and darker and expect no one to challenge you. You can't, right? And if you if you ratchet it up, then they will ratchet it up, and before you know it, you'll be in an armed race of excuse my language, but f ness And that's not what you want. The people in charge, you know, sh- should solve it. But like I said, we were talking about Inger earlier. He has no interest in solving anybody's problem, and I'm glad he's gone. You know, he just wanted to stay a congressman. You know, mm. what about my pain? To heck with your pain. I'm trying to ball out of control here at 80. How old is he? You know, the, what, what, once you get all these old people out of Congress, what are they going to do? Start gardens? You know, they don't want to do that. They want to lord over you. Uh, and nobody wants, you know. Once again. Don't get me wrong. When I was 19, I, I wanted. Going I wanted after everyone. Old tell me what I should do. And I'm sure when I'm 80, 70 year olds will not want me telling them what to do. And they have to fix it. They should fix it before it gets any worse. And we'll see where it's going. I mean, what's the guy who just got, uh, who, who unseated um, Engel? Um, and he's two years after uh, Ocasio Torres, so maybe the place is becoming a little more. Ocasio Cortez. Yeah, no. It, it, want, 
I, I like the the way this is going because, like I said, all uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to say all the old guard, but all the people that have stayed extremely too long. Yeah. If you're a fifth yeah. and sixth or eighth and a tenth term, yeah, yeah, it's time for the new blood. It's time. It's you know we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna be like, the when are the young folks? If the young folks can't stay for two terms. Why can you stay for ten? Right, right? but we're gonna the get to the point where with, oh, where the young leave, people. We're we're at the point where we're going to be start starting to look for the young people to lead us. Yeah. You know, um, hey, I want to and switch to too. look. You just can't trust young people to act like like you just can't trust old people. The problem is money is corrupting, right? So you don't want anybody like Joe Biden got there young. He was twenty nine. He should have a young mindset, and he's still right. there. Hey, you know? we got to we we got to flip. We got to flip to the next yeah. topic. Um, okay. If you look across most of these cities, we're seeing. A, a, an enormous amount of gun violence every night, every weekend. Mm-hmm. And you ask the president, he says democratic cities, but mm-hmm. I, it's, it seems like, like we became accustomed to Chicago and a lot of gun violence, but we're starting to see some of that violence in New York. And we're starting to see that, that violence in, in other places. Okay, I, w- I would disagree with this. All right, because uh, okay. again, ex cop here. Um, I think the violence is always the violence, but I think when it ra- look. So in so, New York, shootings shootings are up two hundred percent. About this, but let's say yesterday someone killed their wife. Right, the day before that someone killed their husband. Right, the day before that someone killed their kid, and in all those days, someone killed. You know their wives, husband, the kids, and all those days. Then the media comes through and goes, oh, this murderer was a, a like a, a, a black husband who killed, ooh, there's racial energy there, ooh. Or this woman who was killed was young and pretty, a beautiful white woman, she's missing. Ooh, we love that. But this one is just this guy and this girl and no one cares, so we, we're gonna just ignore that. The media picks and chooses and, and tries to get you to be outraged about stuff. But if you look so, at statistics, if you look at statistics, the yeah. gun violence has gone up in some of these cities. In New York, yeah, for one. Statistics have worked like this. So is it, uh, is it an upward trend perpetually rising, or is it doing this kind of ebb and flow like, sadly, gun violence does? Uh, uh, these uh, are the uh, questions unfortunately, that I, I'm, I'm... Unfortunately, in New York, it seemed like it skyrocketed. I think there's been a couple of... Uh, I still follow New York news. I think it's, it's, it's been a couple of fairly... Uh, I don't want to say egregious, but like, uh, like uh, the guy who got shot walking his eight year old daughter, sort of like arrogant, like criminal mm-hmm. nonsense, uh, doage. I'm, I'm gonna coin that word, doage. Uh, so, and they call well, him, over the right? weekend, over the weekend, there were 17 people that were shot, yeah. But in the city of how many million, you know what I'm saying? Well, I always I tell my nephew this all the time. Look, when they tell you X amount of people got shot you should go out of how many you know in your public if your populace is a thousand people and a hundred people got shot you got 10 percent. but if you're looking but if you look you're comparing that number to last year's number and if it's at a 200 percent increase you're gonna tell me that's not a problem yeah no well I, i wouldn't say it's not a problem but in this age you also have to look at who's giving you these numbers right Look, if you're getting your numbers from Fox News, you got problems because we know Fox News skews the books, right? If you're getting your numbers from MSNBC, you got a problem because we know. But let's say you're getting them from the NYPD. Let's say if you're getting them from NYPD. NYPD skews the books too. That Comstat stuff, Mm -hmm. it it always makes the cops look right. So we have to, mind you, they're talking about bringing back my own unit. I work street crime. They're talking about bringing back the street crime unit to get guns off the street. Look, the problem with guns on the street is guns in New York always come from where? The South. They drive them up I-95 into the city. So if you want to cure your gun problem, you got to cure your Southern info problem. Just like if you want to cure your drug problem, 
you got to cure your Mexican supply problem. You, no one really cares about about fixing these problems. They care about writing stories and getting elected on them. Oh, I'm going to be tough on crime and put me in Congress. Yeah, shut up. Because we know exactly what that means. You know, that means you want to sit there for 30 years and do nothing. And when something goes bad, you want to blame black people, brown people, immigrant people, the other. So, you know, I mean, we've, we've danced this dance enough at this party. You know, we should either be sick of the dance, sick of the song, or sick of the party. Um, so with the excessive gun violence, does, does Trump... Excessive gun violence? Excessive. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, regular gun violence. <laughs> I mean, there's a difference yeah, in the the you know the level that I guess that's expected versus yeah, you know that, when you have arrogant? thirty people get mowed over yeah. that you know people were attending a funeral and twelve people were either shot or they were killed at the, and I'm like, wait, what, yeah. what in the world's going this on? This is the here? arrogance of morons, man. I remember two years ago there was a block party and someone showed up and shot up the block party. Random. I mean, you know what? This is I, at this point I'm blaming the mothers of these people. I'm blaming the fathers of these people. You know what I'm saying? If I have an issue with you and I, I seek vengeance and I have a gun. I, I will hope that I hope I know full effing well that I'm not gonna shoot up a, a park with kids in it. I, my 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 connection to revenge is is a directed investment like an arrow and it's pointed at someone. It's not this wild fog that lands on everyone, which is what this stupid craziness that I see is. You know, I mean, and and they catch him. Like I said, there's cameras every place. They caught they caught that guy who, who killed that guy walking his six year old. And they should spend the rest of their days in a box. Yes, they should. They don't make yes, no sense. Should. Hey, no this sense. is Ted Hicks at Late Night Parents. Ways to follow the show is latenightparents.com. Final topic. It's going to be I mean, a little touchy one. I want to make sure that. Um, we can sit, we can talk about it, and it's regards to Nick Cannon to be or not to be canceled. Oh, now, Cannon. when we, we're not going to talk about Nick Cannon's, what, what happened with him, the, the video podcast with Pro Professor Griff, the, there were certain things do that were listen, mentioned you know that were... Progressed? Does do your listeners even know who pro, 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 Well, Professor, Professor Griff, Griff from is, from they might need from a background public right. so enemy. Professor Griff was tell us this security of the first world for public right. enemy for public enemy like twenty years ago. Yes, right? and he so was you, relieved of his duty. Grew up together, so they still have connection because, like I said, they all grew up together. Like you and I grew up together, we have connection. Right. So you know, but he's no longer active. He's no longer active. Podcast, but he's no longer active with public enemy. Right, right, right. No, he's no longer in the group. But the idea that they're friends and they go back 20 years, so it makes sense that he would show up on his podcast and have this intimate relationship, like you and I have this intimate relationship of knowing mm -hmm. each other 30 years. So mm -hmm. versus uh, uh, if I was a, a CPA at Do We Cheat Him and How, and I showed up on you and we're talking about um, earbuds, you know, do I'm we not cheat him in the house? Okay, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not gonna be well, as comfortable. I, I think saying, Nick Cannon yeah, got caught up in the moment because yeah, exactly. there's certain times exactly. when the conversation yeah, exactly. goes left. The conversation yeah, exactly. goes left, you got to be able to pull the person back in to say, Oh, yeah. okay, well, wait a minute, let me correct you on X, Y, or Z. Exactly, he, um, he should have been challenged versus, on a lot of the stuff he said, versus going with the flow. Right, he should. Yeah, exactly. He should have been challenged yeah. on a lot of the stuff he said, and I think now, that he's. Believe it or not, I didn't know that Nick Cannon was involved with as many properties as Nick as Cannon he currently did. as he yeah, currently he deals with. He, you want to talk about residual income? You want to talk about someone who is grinding? Definitely, that's Nick Cannon. Um, yeah. so he had Professor Griff, pro, pro, Professor Griff said a few things on there. 
that, mm, you know, if you're of the, the Jewish faith, um, not feeling it. are not feeling him. But yeah. they already were not feeling him. Well, you yeah. know, because he said certain things over the years. And like, like I said, here's a situation where pro, 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 uh, Professor Griff doesn't deal with a multitude of sponsors. Right. He's not a household name. Right. Uh, right. He, exactly. Here's Nick Cannon doing, you, be you know, in the culture to know who Professor Griff is. Right. And that and that that was my, part of my point about like when we we opened this segment on on this. Um It's sort of like if I were what is the equivalent of people that you would know? If I were a popular if Who's popular in their moment? If I were Will Smith, everybody loves Will Smith. If I were Will mm -hmm. Smith mm -hmm. and I one of my old homies podcast, who was uh uh who's a monk, the fruits of Islam, uh Farrakhan, if, uh mm -hmm. right, Minister Farrakhan's podcast, right? It's sort of that. So it's this guy, um, Professor Griff, who was sort of thrown out of the group for saying stuff like this 30 years ago, like mm -hmm. when he was like 19. Um and his his this childhood friend of his who quote unquote made good in like the mainstream world of and made really good he made a really a lot of popular blacks let's call them black centric shows that that cross the bounds for all people to like right he wasn't making shows well like, mainstream shows no yeah, but they were black centric main they 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 were like okay like Chappelle wild and out mainstream but Chappelle with a black centric show that people like, right? So Wild and like Out is, is 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 a black centric show. It's I think it's, they, yeah, that Dave Chappelle show is very black centric. No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about no. It. I'm talking about Wilding Out. Yeah, well, the, the 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 title tells you it's a slang black term. Okay. For just being crazy, right? You're wilding out, you know. Okay. So he's not trying to make content. Uh. I don't want to disparage him, but let's say the guy who's got the Tyler Perry makes black center content too, but it's more for. No, that might be wrong. My Tyler Perry's content is directed at a different black centric audience, it's more women and gay men, I would say. Okay, so. I don't know, man. Wow, you have stumped me. I don't really know who his con his. I, I would say his content is black centric, and popular with mainstream. Is that a is that a category? So <laughs> I don't know. And mind I, you, I'm black, just saying, black. Look, we don't own any of our content, but the stuff we come up with is worth trillions of dollars, right? So they can get rid of him, but then they have to find another black guy to do it. Right, they're not going to be able to find. Look, rap music is taking over because rap music is essentially poetry. Anybody can write poetry, but these beats and these rhythms and these syncopations go to the soul of people, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is why all these knock on wood, uh, try not to get canceled. All these white artists who rap, like uh, all these white rappers, use black artists. Uh, like rhythm makers and beat makers and producers because they mm -hmm. want their swag to sound a certain way as they as they play in this environment. And I think he was really good at going, hey, I'm good with the environment. I can make this thing that these this group likes, my group, as well as not be so crazy and 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 uh not alienating, but so crazy and and alienate. Oh, this one, but, and not be not not be so. Uh, oh, man, you can connect to it if you if you if you're a white person outside the culture, you can look at it and still find it funny and interesting and witty and clever. And not be so so outside of the language and the structure of it that is foreign to you, right? So mm -hmm. while and out was essentially, um, oh, am I thinking about the same road? When they did they did Burns, right? It was the dozens, right? Which is an old black thing that we used to do with the, like, you know, the, right? It was, excuse me, it was when they did the dozens, right? When uh, people would rap against each other, mm -hmm. 
Right, right. So, right. so that energy is very nightclub, uh, very, I mean, it's, he, I don't know. I, maybe they could get somebody else to do it. I don't see how. Well, um, it's a and brand that, that... Hollywood, I don't want to say he's born of Hollywood, but when, when he slipped into Hollywood, he slipped in kind of seamlessly. Because he, I, for what I did not know he was in Public Enemy. Like, and uh, an original member, no less. It's not, you know, uh, just like Tupac was an original member of, of uh, I'm about to say Digital, Digital Underground. Underground. Right, right. So, you know, you're like, well, was he really? Wow. And, and he made good. He was, he was not problematic. You know, he wasn't always at the club getting into shootouts, like drunk and smoking weed. I thought he was always sort of on his grind. So, I hey, don't know. I, 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 I feel I want to jump I'm, in. I, I, I miss him. I don't I feel really bad. Don't. I don't feel bad because he's made some strides to try to correct and number one, see the error in his ways. Right. Um, there was an apology made. Viacom and CBS decided yeah. to part ways with them. Of course, they did. Fox decided to go the other route and said he can con Fox. still okay. He, the, he can still continue um, with the Mass Singer and his upcoming talk show, right. and he, he still should. does. He still does his radio show. So the avenues are still there. He's yeah. trying to correct, you know, the errors in his ways. And if the yeah. the, the apology is heartfelt, and if yeah. you're reaching out to someone of, of the, you know, of the Jewish culture to right. say, okay, let's sit, let's sit down, let's talk. But then want to explain to me, explain to me. Want to sit down. I think we're in a culture. No, they they they, they have they you, right. They and have sat down with Jewish them. people. Whoever the Jewish people who who managed to get but them, but they have sit, sat down with them. Well, yeah, he did. He had a a, a gentleman on his show. I, I forget the, the, the mm -hmm. I think it was a rabbi. Was he a rabbi? I forget what he was. But but the idea that it's not all the Jewish. I'm sure there's a ton of Jewish people who don't care, right? Other people who like him are like, oh, you know, um, and other people who would have well, everyone makes happily mistakes. Taken, other people who would have happily taken the apology, right? So that's like five groups right there. But I, I always think it's what the American media wants is to find the guy who will give them the most media sensational outrage or long lastingness. So, yeah, I think. <laughs> well, I, 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 I think, think the story is still the story is still being the written. Was fair. They could have found people who would like. I wish he hadn't said it. I wish you know maybe they should have had somebody come on. And tell them where he was wrong. Let me tell you, that's ridiculous, first of all. And and that's been a trope it's about us Jews for a while now. And let me tell you why and where it comes from. And then you can, uh, but first, it's always, no, nope, everybody's got to be instantly canceled. And we don't, we don't run the media. <laughs> hey, but you're instantly I want to, I, I, I want to ask you, I want to ask you one last question. Um, yeah. And then we're going to close out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Steve Stout. Name sound familiar? Steve Stout, the mm -hmm. commissioner. Steve Stout from... Uh, he does, like, brand management. He's been in music. He's produced, like, Mary J. Blige and um, Nas and a, a few other... I probably know his work. Hit, hit, hit makers. Um, okay. He has come out... Well, I think he was interviewed by Variety magazine and said, if Drake goes independent it's going to destroy the music business why why is drake that important drake is that important because drake puts together a single or puts together a song it plays the entire what's the name it, it plays the entire summer yeah, and in, a, in a rigged record environment that pushes some people over other people. Are these organic swings? Remember when music used to be organic, people would just have the best beats and rise through. Now people remember. Um, oh, who's the guy? I'm about to say Fast by Freddie. No, um, he was yeah. So he was. Uh, I sound like every other fight. What was his name? Oh, 
he almost got into a, to pay for play on the radio, which is illegal. Um, Funk Master Flex. Thank you, Funk Master Flex. Yeah. And and it's this whole thing of I won't play your spins if you don't play this game. And some people <laughs> are like more than and so. Yeah, I, you wonder why everybody's making music, but there's only essentially fifty musicians that anybody ever listens to. Right, right, right. And that's it. It may be right. maybe a hundred because it's about. 20 or so rappers, 20 or so country people, 20 or so pop artists, you know, Katy Perry and, and uh, uh, what's the other girl who plays guitar? Uh, so there's always like these people, but there's always, you always still need to concentrate on like the top five, like right. five women, five men, because it's, it's, and it's all the same record company pushing it. All the music is always owned by the same guy, <laughs> right? Whether you Jay Z talking about yo, this is the streets, or your you know, uh, what is her name? Um, I know her song, Alicia Keys. No, the the young white blonde girl who they said was an alt right sensation. She plays the guitar, and she she's got beef with uh the other young white lady singer. Took one pregnant now. Taylor Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Right. So Taylor Swift is like like a huge superstar and, mm -hmm. but it's it's all in the same kind of box of like these 10 women and some guys rappers these 10 guys and maybe some women you know but nobody cares about classical music or there's maybe eight people in country music but country music is dying for a good reason you know you guys you guys in country music you came to civil rights a little too late the Dixie chicks get rid of Dixie. Now you're just a chicks. Now you're just a sexist name. Once we got Lady A. The Listen, bitches, we, I don't, we, yeah, we got to we, we, we gotta, we gotta wrap this up. We got to talk about yeah. Hamilton next time. We got to talk yes. about, is it time that Hamilton is canceled? Because I heard a few it people. It's, it's, I, I, they you stole know, the music. Nobody's playing salsa. They also saw rap music written by a Spanish guy. I don't understand. Uh, on on the Disney Plus channel, it drove eighty five percent of the traffic. Crazy, crazy it, type stuff. Which is good. I mean, it tells it shows people have some interest in, I guess, music and theater as well as the history of the place. All three things good. So yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true. Talk about it. Hey, best ways to get in contact with you. Catch me uh, on. I'm true armor every place. And on the places that I'm not true armor, I'm true S armor. Uh, like and subscribe and follow as I try right. to do this thing. And I'm the real Ted Hicks, and we're out. Peace.